Welcome to our live episode for today's Q&A. Maraming salamat to each and everyone na nag-aabang sa ating every Sunday na Q&A. So this live Q&A is made supposedly for our LCF Masterclass enrollees, but in celebration of our National Low Carb Day 2022, this coming October 2, 2022, Less than a month na lang, we are opening our live Q&A para mas marami yung mga matututo. Kasi yung mga questions that are being thrown to us in our masterclass groups are very, very much important. Sobrang dense na mga information and of course, mostly yung mga questions nila hindi na pang beginners because they've already studied our modules, our videos na not just for beginners but also for those na nag improve na kanilang health and also those who are already healing. So may mga pros na tayo da- dyan. Sa mga baguhan pa lang, welcome sa mga bago pa sa ating groups, especially sa 14-day masterclass group that is our 14-day health optimization masterclass. Kahit wala ka pang sakit, then all the more you need to study low-carb and fasting the right way because this one is for prevention. Hindi lang siya for healing, but for those who are still young and healthy at gusto nilang i-preserve yung kanilang health, then low-carb nutrition and fasting is the way to go according to our practice based on our experiences. So, mga questions na very, very much na para sa mga baguhan pa lang, most likely, nandyan lang yan sa ating video lessons. We suggest for you to focus on that kasi the purpose of this Q&A is to supplement. So, if it's already discussed there, then you can just review it because yung mga videos sa ating class are all available na. Pwede, pwede nyo na siyang panuorin every day. At kung meron kayong tanong, pwedeng pwede rin siyang balikan. So, maraming salamat po habang wala pang mga questions. So, happy Sunday to each and everyone. Maraming salamat sa inyong pag-aabang. May video na po ba for breastfeeding for moms? Yes, meron tayo dyan. I think I've interviewed one si Pinoy Kito PH, Pinoy, Pinay Kito, Pinay Kito, and na uh, vlogger, and also my sister, attorney Kat, attorney Kat. Chu, na ngayon ay pregnant din and for the last time he was breastfeeding also for the past year to my nephew, the healthiest low-carb baby. Kasi yung paglo-low-carb niya since pregnancy until birth, until now, our key is now one year old. He turned one last month and he is mm, 95% carnivore perhaps and yung other 5 to 10% na hinakain niya are still low carb na vegetables like sayote, uh, repolyo o cabbage and also my other sister-in-law that's uh, Mavi and Angel who are also low carb breastfeeding moms because my nephew, meron pa akong nephew na 6 month old and also kakaturn lang ng two ng twins and they are all breastfed under low carb. So, we've discussed that many times. So, pwedeng-pwede nyo panuorin yan ulit. Fasting. Pwede po ba ako mag-fasting, mag-low carb kahit may maintenance po pang high blood? For those na meron ng mga iniinom na gamot, it is best to do it the guided way. You can work with our low-carb physicians or your doctors and you can just learn in our LCF Masterclass for Hypertension and Cardiovascular Disease para malaman ninyo how to go about. Kasi it's a very, very complex na topic. And when it comes to medications, especially para sa pang high blood, hindi yan pwedeng basta-basta ang tanggalin. There is what we call as weaning schedule. Weaning as in W-E-A-N. Hindi yung weaning na panalo na W-I-N, ha? So, it's weaning para pa konti konte yung pagbawas. Para siyang yung sa mga bata na hindi pwedeng biglain when transitioning. So, pa konti onting transition from your current dose and finer adjustment depending on your response. So, hindi yan one size fit all na schedule. In our classes, in our low-carb and fasting nutrition classes, you will be taught 
kung paano maipasok sustainably and the healthy way na hindi mabibigla yung inyong katawan. And you will also be taught kung ano yung dapat i-monitor step by step na kahit pa hindi nagpa-practice ng low carb ang inyong doctor, you can coordinate with them, maipapakita ninyo kung ano yung inyong monitoring sheet, how many times a day kayo mag-check ng inyong BP, ano yung timing kung kailan kayo mag-check ng inyong BP para malaman natin when you are already ready to lower down your dose if ever na meron ngang healing. There are gauges of healing. Merong mga palatandaan to know that your body is already healing. Hindi lang basta yung pagbabalang ng blood sugar o pagbabalang ng blood pressure but there are other things yan sinasabi natin non-scale victories hindi lang nasa numero but there are other items na kapag nalaman, nalaman mo ito alam mo na you are already on your road to healing that's why merong nagsabi ata kanina na ang gaan daw ng kanyang pakiramdam so it's so hard to do OMAD then don't do it hindi required ang OMAD especially if nahihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihihih
Ay, this is Dr. Josephine Grace Rojo Tan. Tan na po ang apelido natin because I'm already married. Feeling ko dalawang beses na akong nagpakasal ngayon. And thank you. Special mention to, of course, Tito Cecil who made the most beautiful gown ng aking dream gown na hindi ko nga naalala na meron pala akong dream gown na ginawa niya. Uh, it's so, so, so beautiful. Sobrang ganda. Thank you so much, Tito Cecil. And yes, that is Cecilio Abad, Life Journey on Low Carb. Yan, maraming tips and tricks si Tito Cecil on doing low carb. Siya ata yung low carber na kilala ko na pinaka-consistent uminom ng bone broth every day. Kitang-kita sa kanyang glowing skin. How I wish merong time lahat gumawa ng bone broth. So thank you so much, Tito. I hope to see you soon. And have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Marami from Clark, from Saudi Arabia. Yes, fatty liver. Marami na tayong video for that. You can just search my name, Dr. Josephine Grace Rojo or Dr. Rojo Fatty Liver. Meron tayong marami ng videos about that. At I think marami na rin tayong guesting about that. But if you, it's not enough, then maybe you would like to consider being a part of our exclusive group kung saan na meron tayong online videos that are available. These are premium videos that we made for healing talaga. So, you can just message our admins para for you to join. But sa ngayon, our platform is it's available in Facebook. So, yan. Delikado po ba ang pagbaba ng potassium? Yes, delikado yan. Especially if it's already critical, below 3.5, below 3, hypokalemia can cause death. Very important ang electrolyte sa ating katawan. And one thing about electrolyte na hindi alam ng karamihan is nagkakaroon sila ng potassium imbalance, kakulangan sa potassium sa katawan, hindi actually directly direct related sa pagbaba ng kanilang potassium intake, but actually related to salt intake. So before kayo nagkaroon ng problem with your potassium, try to see kung ano yung inyong salt intake, sodium chloride. Because salt is sodium chloride and sodium is the most abundant electrolyte in our body and it serves as a buffer. Para siyang parang pang lock-in. It's a very complex mechanism. But if you can ensure na meron kayong adequate na sodium sa inyong katawan, adequate salt sa katawan, most of your potassium will be spared. Mas save sila inside because potassium is an intracellular na electrolyte. So, siya rin yung pinaka-abundant na electrolyte but inside the cells. Wherein yung sodium naman, siya naman yung most abundant na electrolyte nasa labas ng cell. So, dapat yung electrical charge nila is equal. Para equal yung electrical charge because our body functions by electricity, yung positive and negative. So, kung mababa masyado yung sodium yung intracellular, yung potassium na nasa loob ng cell, sa habuli niya yan. So, it will actually expel some of those potassium to balance out. Dahil hindi, wala siyang pakialam kung ano yung level but kailangan balance yung kanyang, kanyang charges and at the same time, yung level ng potassium outside the cell, which is the serum potassium, yung kinukuha natin sa ating dugo kapag nagpapalaboratory tayo, meron siyang critical na dapat yun yung i-maintain na yung katawan. So kung mababa na yan and it's been there for a long time, then it's already not just a, a an acute na problem. It could have been a long problem na, long-standing problem. Yung pinakadelikado actually is not the low potassium na nasa serum lang, but also the lower potassium na nasa loob ng cells. At yung potassium level na nasa loob ng cells ay hindi ganon kadaling i-measure. It's not being represented by the ones we take in the laboratory. It is because hindi siya, hindi pwedeng i-measure mo yung potassium sa bawat isang cells natin because our cells is in millions. But you can have a clinical symptom showing na mababa na yung potassium sa katawan. Yung isa dyan is pagkakaroon ng muscle cramps kapag nagka-cramps ka sa gabi or kahit lumalakad ka, lalakad ka lang or nagsiswimming at ang sobrang dali mong mag-muscle cramps 
those can be related to low potassium, sometimes uh, bowel movement na halos hindi ka umuutot or nahihirapan kang magbawas because our potassium will be the one to help our muscles to contract. So yung ating chan, yung ating bituka is still made up of smooth muscles at nagpeperistalsis yan, gumagalaw. And if your potassium is low, then there's also low, yung tawag nating hypokalemic na gastroparesis. So gastroparesis is parang paralysis of our gastrointestinal tract, yung ating bituka, and it is it can be related to hypokalemia or mababang potassium. It's also very common among diabetics. So, kailangan you make sure that your body is always in check when it comes to electrolytes and the discussion in electrolytes is also a very important na kailangan talaga ang siguraduhin ng mga baguhan pa lang, especially sa nagsisimula pa ng low carb. And I hope we can discuss that plus more in our upcoming National Low Carb Day this coming October 2, 2022 sa Phil Invest Alabang. And I hope to see you there. So National Low Carb Day, October 2, 2022. In Phil Invest Alabang, mag meet and greet tayong lahat dyan, although it might be a little crowded. It's just 500 pesos. So message na lang yung admins natin sa page for you to become part of that. Kasi limited lang po yung space ng ating tent. Uh, although we can accommodate, we are expecting to have 2,000 na participants, na members, and I hope you can be there. But for those na hindi na nga mabibigyan pa ng physical slot na attendance, then you can just have an online ticket instead. So online na lang for our uh, participants na gustong umattend, especially yung mga wala sa Pilipinas, you can also message our admins, okay, in those numbers. So yun yung mga kailangan nating Isipin, just like this one, normal bang constipated pag nag-low carb? Constipation, hindi siya normal kung ito ay nagkukos na talaga ng clinical symptoms. Pagdudugo, pagsasakit ng chan, discomfort, and many others. But if what you mean is lowered yung stool bulk, mas kakaunti na lang yung poops, or mas paminsan-minsan na lang as compared before nung naka-high carb ka na every time kumakain ka ay gusto mo na mga mag-CR ulit. Usually that is not the case when it comes to low-carb nutrition. Yung iba na sanay na twice or three times a day mag-poops or daily mag-poops and then by the time they do low-carb, it is usually lessened. And it is not a cause of worry because most of the time, hindi talaga ganon kalaki na yung stool bulk natin. If you are fond of eating a lot of fibers before and rice, so maraming residual yan, maraming basura, maraming kailangan ilabas. But when you are eating low carb, especially the one in our safe list, low carb, and mostly on the nutrient-dense proteins and fats, which would include meat, eggs, then most likely maliit lang yung inyong stool residue. So maliit na lang yung inyong poops, and hindi nyo rin ito kailangan persahin ilabas. It just goes to show that you are eating the food that your body really needs. Halos lahat ng ito ay naaabsorb niya at kakaunti na lang yung kailangan niyang ilabas na mga basura. And for me, that's a good thing. You are functioning on the level of efficiency. No need for your gut to overwork. And what's good is for you to realize na Hindi kailangan magbawas araw-araw, especially if you are eating right and you feel well and wala namang kahit anong discomfort. I think I made a video about that on constipation under low carb and it was discussed there the other tricks tips and tricks on how to improve your bowel movement. If ever, meron talaga yung iba na gustong gusto or sanay na sanay sa kanilang potty training before na every 5.55 in the morning ay nagbabawas na sila. So you can still continue to do that. You just need a little push. So maybe, well, if you are still fasting, you can just have plain black coffee or tea or even warm water early in the morning para naka-fasting pa rin kayo. But you can have that trigger or push for you to eliminate whatever it is that you want to eliminate. For those who wish to join our 14-day low-carb LCF Masterclass, message lang po yung admins natin sa ating mga pages. Nandiyan lang po sila. And they're also here 
and they will help you with your registration. Bronchial asthma, yes, okay na okay sa low carb. In fact, when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with childhood asthma, but I mana overcome ko na siya. And but when I turned into adult, naging allergic rhinitis siya. And then when I become an ENT, I realized na it's all part pala of single disease. It is what we call as one airway disease kasi yung ilong yung lalamunan and then going to our lungs it's part of one airway upper airway lower airway kaya kapag nagsasalita ako i usually speak parang nasal speech you no know? yung hindi yung parang sinisipon kahit hindi na ako sinisipon like it's a very clear breathing for me but for the longest time ever since i was a kid always congested yung ilong ko because i was so used to having rhinitis because lumaki ako na parating kumakain ng sweets yung isa sa paborito kong go to na dessert before halos every every lunch time would be five pieces of bukayo yung coconut na Candid coconut. So, no wonder hindi hindi nawawala yung rhinitis ko before. But for the last four years, going four years almost, na naglo low carb and fasting, wala na akong bouts, especially after I've healed my gut issues when I did various kinds of fasting for healing, like the DCR protocol, the dry, clean fasting, and refeeding protocol. I think we have a video about that. Search nyo lang, DCR healing protocol. You can see it there. So uh, that and more part yan ng may heal ng low-carb nutrition. Bronchial asthma is discussed thoroughly in our LCF Masterclass for asthma, autoimmune disease, and inflammation masterclass. That's one of the most important na masterclass that anyone should, I feel like, should really learn. Kasi yung mga learnings ko on that masterclass is also very, very important na once you get to know the basics sa uh, autoimmunity and inflammation, parang all other diseases, you'll know how to deal with it. So, more questions. Looking forward matuto kung ano pong dapat gawin. So yes, continue na po. Be a part of our community. If you wish to know more, meron naman tayong mga free groups in Facebook. Life Without Tries and Local Feasting and Fasting Community. So these groups, uh, I think collectively, mga nasa 700,000 na yung dalawang groups na it. To, and you can help by sharing this video, this live video, and also liking our pages, subscribing to our channels para lahat tayo aware. And of course, you can invite everyone. Huwag lang po kayong pumunta ng National Low Carb Day na mag-isa, although it's a very imp important and happy gathering para sa ating mga low carb enthusiasts. We will make some noise, but a very positive and happy noise para mas marami tayong matulungan when it comes to low-carb nutrition. And you can bring your family and friends on that day. We will prepare a lot of things for you to enjoy. Kahit yung mga hindi pa low-carber or for the kids, meron silang area where they can play and also have fun. So for those pala na mga masterclass enrollees na nandito ngayon, kindly I'd kindly but if kayo ay masterclass enrollees para kung meron kayong questions, we will prioritize that. So maraming salamat everybody for being here. So from late, meron din delay menstruation pag yung hemoglobin less than 11. So it could be meron po bang connection. You can check first. Ha? Baka meron ng anemia. So anemia... It could be na hindi sila, it's not the delayed menstruation causing the, the anemia. Or it could be na baka merong malnutrition to start with. So a woman who's having malnutrition, inadequate nutrition, might have some some manifestation leading to delayed menstruation or irregular menstrual period. Because supposedly, a very healthy woman na tamang-tama yung nutrition sa katawan and, and very healthy in general ay enough to ovulate regularly. And not ovulating regularly might mean that something might be up 
hindi naman merong sakit agad, but maybe you need to improve something. One of the most common reason for irregular na menses for women would be PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome. But for others, meron akong experience na naglow carb and then nung naglow carb sila at pumayat na sila ng bonggang bongga at wala na silang fat stores sa katawan, dun na sila nagkaroon ng irregular na menstrual period. So it could be na baka na sobra na kayo sa fasting, na sobra na kayo sa inyong pag the diet, you did it not the best way. And kahit pa na-heal nyo na yung inyong inflammation sa katawan at naging successful na kayo when it comes to your weight loss process, but pinagpatuloy nyo pa rin kasi natakot na kayo, hindi na kayo kumakain more than two meals a day, kahit payat na payat na kayo, you are actually endangering yourselves into undernutrition. Baka pinukulang na kayo sa food, especially proteins. So proteins are the the amino acids are the building blocks of our body. So, kung maglo-lower ma kayo ng yung food intake but never lower on your protein intake and also the healthy natural fats kailangan din yon. Hindi pwedeng puro protein lang. Based on the studies before, kasi merong studies before, matagal na 19 70s ba yon or 50s na merong scientist na pumunta siya sa area ng mga North, polar bears, parang nasa North Pole na ata yun, or sa Atlantic Sewan. Basta yung maroon ng mga Eskimos. Nakita niya doon, because he was an American scientist, nakita niya doon, na yung mga tao doon, wala kinakain gulay. And for the longest time, nakita niya, di ba, yung pinag, pinag, niniwalaan natin that vegetable is the ultimate na kailangan natin sa ating pumuhay. But nakita niya doon in those areas na very cold, na very icy all throughout the year, na walang vegetation, walang pananim na tumutubo. People there are actually eating 100% carnivore, either from kung ano-anong mga animals na nandun or mostly mga fish, and they are at the top of their health. Sobrang ganda na kanilang physical profile and there and hindi sila masyado nagkakasakit they have good na longevity profile except for pag namamatay sila sa ginaw sa infection sa lamig sa accidents but no not much when it comes to metabolic na diseases walang hypertension walang high blood kahit naka carnivore sila so they tried to simulate it sa laboratory or in a controlled setting in the US na mostly puro proteins yung kinakain lean meats and then also very lean na mga fishes pero hindi nila mai maipakita na same yung result hindi ganoon kaganda yung effect sa kanilang medical na na result ng kanilang mga participants and then they found out it is because not because of of uh, proteins per se or lack of carbohydrates but it's actually because of lack of fat so there should be a good blend of natural fats and proteins because too much proteins can still be converted into glucose if sobra 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 talaga ha because your body will not be able to make the essential fats essential fats can only come from fats, hindi siya pwede makonvert. Although some proteins pwede siya maging other fats na hindi essential like cholesterol, like triglycerides, and all those. Pero mostly, it will be converted into glucose first. At yung katawan mo will be more on glucose burning and not on fat burning. Especially that proteins will, also, will have an intermediate impact sa insulin release. Kapag kumain ka, as if you compare the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the fats, yung carbohydrates, siya yung pinaka-spike sa insulin. Yung protein is moderate, and yung fats halos wala. So if you eat a lot of proteins, it will be intermediate lang sana. But if it's too much, then it can be high. So we already know that when it comes to healing, lowering our inflammation, yung pagpapababa ng ating insulin is also very important unless you do it for a specific reason like meron tayong mga specific participants who really 
uh, do muscle bulking, they do a lot of physical exercises, lifting a lot of weights to really induce muscle muscle bulking para lumaki yung muscles nila. But for general public na hindi naman nagkakaroon ng ganong direct intention to build muscles, then there's no need to overdo it. Okay, so a good balance of of natural fats and proteins and good news. Alam niyo ba ko ng good news? Natural foods are usually blended with the right amount of good fats and good proteins like pork chop. So, isang pork chop, tama lang yung blend nun, ng lean meat nun at yung kanyang taba. And also, yung mga fish, like kung anong fish man dyan, kasama na yan. So, hindi kailangan deliberately alisin. Kapag kumain ng beef, if merong taba dyan, if merong bone marrow dyan, you can enjoy it as long as you enjoy it without rice, without carbohydrates. Para ma-induce pa rin yung fat burning phase at hindi tayo mag-lead into fat build up. Because the fats that we eat, yung mga fats na kinakain natin, magiging dangerous lang siya kapag ito ay hindi nababurn, hindi nagagamit as energy. And that can happen if you are consuming a lot of food that will spike your insulin. And again, ano yung mga food na yon? It's usually high carb. So the cakes, the pastries, the kamote, the saging, the oatmeal. Uh, ano pa ba? Kanin, of course. So, if you eat all those together with your proteins, kahit pa healthy yung yung proteins, kahit pa healthy yung inyong fats, but if you consume that together with your carbs and other insulin-spiking food, then it might not be the best. Okay. And one month na ako nag-low-carb, bakit naramdam ko palpitation at hilo ng konti? Electrolyte imbalance. So that's why we suggest if meron kayong nararamdaman na ganyan, then maybe you didn't do it the best possible way, the ideal way, the most, the best practice, kumbaga. So you are just lacking in electrolytes. Madali na naman masolusyonan yan, but you need to know where you are right now. I suggest you join our LCF Masterclass to know more. Usually, it will start after two weeks of doing low carb. Na kapag nagsim- yung inang simula nyo na low carb is a general low carb na inalis nyo lahat ng carbs, but without adequately ensuring na enough yung inyong electrolyte intake. Okay? Hi, Hi love. love! Tulungan mo na ako magbasa, love. <laughs> Hi, love! Sige, 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 sige. Gan, 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 gan. 10 minutes. Sige. So, ano kayo dito? Hmm? Nandistract ako. Nandiyan sila. I miss you, love. I miss you so much. Ngayon lang tayo nakita. No? <laughs> From Clark, Saudi Arabia. Um, ano to? Can Public? I, Public. Uh-huh. Hindi ko na makita kung saan yung mga masterclass and rollies. Ayan. Mm. Sana yan. Sana yung question. Yan. Low carb for seven months from 78 down to 58. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome po and congratulations. Hi, Doc. Bakit po tumaas pa din ang uric acid kahit ang low carb na? Mm, if it's correct low carb and tumaas yung uric acid, it could be na baka related pa rin to sa inadequate na electrolyte na management. So, a lower... Because increased uric acid mostly nanggagaling yan from... Ano yan? So, other uh, mostly sobrang proteins, no? So, maraming proteins. Normally, yung katawan natin, it will just excrete because uric acid is a byproduct of protein metabolism. So, generally, na-eliminate lang yan. But on its elimination, kailangan meron siyang buffer. And that buffer usually is potassium. So, if mababa yung potassium mo sa katawan at wala ka ng potassium na i-buffer, parang pang-exchange ng uric acid. So, you will actually retain uric acid in your body kasi nga, wala kang pang-exchanger nito in our kidneys na parang ilabas. So, there's this build-up. But over time, based on our experience, nawawala naman yan. No? Hindi naman siya nagsusustain and it's subclinical. Ibig sabihin, mataas nga yung uric acid but it's not the dangerous kind. The dangerous kind of uric hyperuricemia is if it's with inflammation. So, mataas na uric acid plus inflammation 
will lead into arthritis. So, pagkakaroon ng deposits ng mga urate crystals in your joints or even kidney stone formation from those urate crystals. But there is this study showing na hyperuricemia alone, subclinical, walang, walang kasamang inflammation is not really a cause of worry. You can just monitor it, but for low-carb side, maybe you should look into your electrolyte intake. So again, Maba, baka mababa yung inyong potassium intake, mababa yung inyong potassium na stores na sa katawan. And as what we've discussed a little while ago, potassium that is lowered is mostly related also to inadequate sodium sa katawan. And the moment na hindi na-address yung sodium needs, then the potassium also becomes problematic at Yun na, kailangan lang i-address yung potassium and then kailangan nyo pa rin i-address yung sodium. That is why salt fix is very, very important, especially sa mga nagsisimula. Okay. Hmm? Good morning, Doc. <clears throat> I joined the LCF Master class last March 2022. I've been practicing low carb for almost eight months now. I am 46 kilograms now from 53. I still have high cholesterol. <laughs> With Amnina. smiley face. With smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to cholesterol in low carb, it's actually siya sa pinaka highlight ng ating low carb con. Uh, Sir Marco Reyes and also Dr. Iris Radev will be the one discussing the elevated cholesterol in low carb and why we shouldn't worry. I made a video about that already, but if that's not enough, magkakaroon tayo ng updates on 2022 scientific updates, kung ano yung recent data on why we shouldn't worry on high cholesterol in low carb. Especially na kung yung mataas doon is just the LDL, HDL, and total cholesterol. Lower dapat yung VLDL and triglycerides. And of course, the other parameters of inflammation and your insulin level and blood sugar is also under control, then there's no need to worry. And of course, ang mag-ho-host ng ating National Low Carb Day kay Kaming Dalawa ni Love. So, I hope we can see you there. So, Kaming Dalawa ni Love ang mag-ho-host for that whole day event while we will have our experts discuss each topic. So, isa yan, yung about LMHR or lean mass hyper-responders. Yung mga low carbers na tumataas talaga yung kanilang cholesterol way higher. Parang 1 is to 3 yung ratio ng LDL to triglycerides ba yun? Meron siyang ratio na it's been shown to be not a cause of worry because their overall cardiac risk, like yung calcium score, ay very, very low. So, hindi siya directly related na kapag mataas ang cholesterol, ay aatakihan ka na. Kasi ngayon, mas nakikita natin, sobrang dami ang very normal, normal. even low yung kanilang total cholesterol. And still, they, they succumb to heart attack and strokes. Ito love. Hi, Doc. Mataas po yung lipase ko according sa last blood test. Ano po kaya yung pwedeng i-upgrade? Lipase is enzyme from pancreas, pancreas, pancreatic lipase. So maybe you need to do a full blood workup. Pancreas related can be related to your bile, can be related to your liver. So you can check. You can just look into the inflammation in general. But of course, mas mabuti if merong kang full workup. In our inflammation masterclass and also fatty liver, which is one of the most common cause of liver problems, meron tayong list sa ating masterclass ng mga laboratories that are suggested for you to check para alam mo kung ano yung inyong baseline. Okay? So I hope it's not something serious because to elevated lipase can be a sign of pancreatitis okay, and, and it can be a cause of worry. But I hope since nakaka online ka naman ngayon <laughs> at nakakapag Facebook pa, I hope you are doing well because pancreatitis will give you one of the most painful kind of pain in your life na hindi ka talaga magiging functional. Yan. Uh... May diverticulitis po ako, nine months on LCIF na po. Pero lately po, sumusumpong yung diverticulitis ko. Is it due to high-protein diet or 
So Salamat. you can just check first kung ano yung inyong pinagkakakain. Hindi lang mo yan basta about sa protein and fats, but also the kind of proteins and fats. So again, always stick to the safe list. Try to do a one-week food review. Baka nakakain ka ng the once in our caution list. And ikaw lang ang makakasagot niyan. You should be honest with yourself. And if it's 100%, you are 100% honest na wala ka talaga nakain caution list, then maybe you can do a full workup. Because although low-carb nutrition and fasting is best done to manage inflammation, but there can be other factors as well. Hindi naman natin hinihingi, but there can be other factors that can lead into other problems that may look like their verticulitis, but it could be like tumor formation na hindi lang na-address ng, ng ating nutrition. As what my sister just asked yesterday, like, paano the, what is expected outcome if you will stick to the best practice of low carb and fasting hindi ka na ba daw mamamatay <laughs> <laughs> so that's their question um, oh, that's a question also of my Parang brother-in-law fountain of youth uh uh-uh. oh so mamamatay pa rin tayong lahat hindi pa natin nakita yung fountain of youth but the aging process might just be slowed and again Nutrition is a very important aspect when it comes to longevity, when it comes to living long, and when it comes to not getting sick right away. But marami pa rin contribution, the normal wear and tear of our body, the pollution na nasa paligid natin, and the stresses that we have in life, the mental, psychological stresses, all of those things are part of those na kaya talaga tayo nagkakaroon ng aging. We can just delay it, but we cannot really stop. It. So we can just do whatever that we can and we will do whatever we can do to prevent it. And nutrition and through low carb and fasting so far is the best that worked for us and for our loved ones and families and among many others. But you have to pair it with the right mindset and everything. And again, for that one, try to do a food recall. That's why we always advise for everybody to have a food journal para makita talaga. And yan, we always go back sa hindi lang basta sa ating list but stick to the safe list talaga. Okay? I think we can still have mm, one o'clock na. One or two more questions. <clears throat> Mahirap filter yung mga. <laughs> Pero may nabasa ako kanina na da, may, nahirapan daw siyang makabalik pagtulog. <laughs> Marami naman kasing factors. Mahirap makabalik magtulog. Magmelatonin ka lang muna. So melatonin is one of the most important na na-discover at ang gamot. Because melatonin is natural. We make our own melatonin in the body. It's part of healing. It can help us sleep. But it's important function, hindi lang masyadong na, na emphasize, but it's actually for healing. Melatonin and ascorbic acid, its importance in our everyday is one of the major topics in our Low Carb Con 2022 to be discussed by our very own Sir Alan Lennon Cura. So we are looking forward for those topics to be discussed. I know, maraming matutulungan yan. Okay. Hi Doc, Masterclass in Rolly here in Canada. It's my fourth month na ngayon, na, pero palagi pa akong nag-leg craps. At di pa rin masyadong bumaba yung weight ko kahit strict ako sa low carb. 16-8 yung ano niya, ratio at tapos wala akong limit sa meat okay. until full. If you first, leg cramps, so that can be related to lowered electrolytes still, like potassium. Kasi the moment na nagkaroon ka na ng ganyan, so kailangan meron ka munang i-correct. So that's why merong corrective dose. The supplements that are being bought uh, na over the counter is just 99 milligrams of potassium. And the amount of potassium we need based on RDA, ha? although RDA is not really the end-all be-all, but based on RDA alone, you need 3,500 milligrams of potassium a day. Mm-hmm. So imagine 3,500, 35 tablets yun, 35 capsules. So that's already... Very, very high. But generally, kung na-insure mo sana na malalock in mo yung potassium mo sa katawan by adequately consuming enough salt, you don't need to to deliberately talaga nakakain ng, na magte-take ng ganyang kataas. But if you already have signs of lowered potassium, then all the more, you might need more than those 3,500. 
the potassium citrate na tablets being given as prescription, yung nire-reseta talaga ng doktor, is merong 1,080-1,060 mg ba yan? And you can, others give it three times a day on top of food that are high in potassium. So, kahit pa nag-electrolyte drink ka, nagawa natin, pero yung electrolyte drink niyan, that's just very, very minimal. Baka kailangan mo talaga ngayon mag-prescription dose ng potassium to correct first bago kayo mag-restart ulit. And hindi masyadong bumababa yung weight because 16-8 in general is not really a very long fast to do weight loss. Especially if you are eating without limit, yung walang limit until full, you can do that if you're already on maintenance. But if you still want to lose weight, maybe you can consider lowering your overall caloric okay. intake para yung mababurn mong fat sa katawan mo during ketosis will be the fats coming from your body. And right now, you may, most likely you are still in ketosis, but the energy that you are using is coming from your food. So, yun lang naman yun. But you don't need to force it also. So, kung hindi pa kaya, you can choose matagal naman, for month ka na, I'm sure you've adopt, adopted very well. So, you can stick to your 16-8, but eating a little less na para mabigyan ng pagkakataon yung inyong endogenous fats, yung fats na katawan ninyo to be burned. Or you can lower down, you can increase your fasting window at 18 hours or 20 hours if you can. But don't, don't hurry, okay? What is four months in 20 years, in 30 years na namuhay ka? Sobrang konti pa lang yan. Huwag natin madaliin yung ating katawan and there's also this phenomenon that we call as fat whoosh. So especially for those na matagal nang overweight, so yung kanilang mga adipose cells, yung kanilang mga fat cells, sanay na ganito kalaki, super distended. So yung nag carb na sila, nag-shrink na, di ba? But yung kanilang cells, parang balloon, na hindi pa siya sanay na ngayon, na-shrink siya. So it will actually fill it up with water. Pupunuin niya ng water in hope kasi nasanay siya all those years. Napunong-puno siya always. So it will try to save the space by filling it up with water. But if you will stick to it as, as long as you can, na malalaman ng cells mo, your body can already sense na, parang wala na talagang pag-asang lumaki pa ko ulit. It will just let go at bigla siyang mag magko-collapse and that is the fat whoosh. Kaya maraming ganoon after four, three months, four months, six months na parang halos walang nangyayari. Initial lang yung pag-weight loss and then after wala na. Very, very slow process even if they're fasting the right way, doing low carb the right way. Just hang in there. Huwag kayong matakot, trust the process at magugulat na lang kayo, bigla-bigla that the fat wash will happen. And pagkagising nyo si Insta ng umaga, sobrang dami yung inyong wiwi and then wala na kayong pagmamanas and bigla na lang from large, baka medium na kayo or small na kayo or you feeling greater and looking good. So, it's not just about the physical aspect but most importantly, you notice how you feel. You feel lighter, you don't have any aches and pains and those are the better gauge than just your weight okay one last Sige before na. we end uh, matas po ang BP ko dok at masakit ulo kaya minum ako ng certain no rice po ako ulam ko pa ngayon bulalo. pwede po ba hindi hindi po ba lalala yung high blood ko <laughs> sa kalokal so uh, sa pag yung pag, pagsakit ng ulo isa siya sa pinaka immediate na immediate na manifestation of low sodium, low salt. Mm -hmm. uh, headache, headache yan agad. Yan yung isa sa pinaka-common na nararamdaman ng mga nagda-diet. Kahit hindi pa low carb, ha, they cannot stop themselves from eating kasi nga sumasakit yung ilang, kanilang ulo at akala nila kulang na sila sa glucose. When in fact, when in fact, it's just lack of sodium. So, especially sa mga hypertensive, we understand that for the longest time, they've been advised to avoid salt. So, parang lahat tayo, we were all brainwashed to be afraid of salt. And yung mas nakita nga natin, yung mas may mga pinakamaraming side effects sa paglo-low carb, ay yung mga taong takot sa salt to start with. They did low carb the right, they did low carb, eliminated the carbs that are bad, but they weren't able to adequately put the needed salt in the body. Kasi the moment you do low carb, if shifting from high carb, you will need more salt than usual. 
And kung low salt na kayo to begin with and then nag-low carb pa kayo and then still low salt, then eto, dito na lumalabas yung mga nahihilo, nagkakaroon ng headache, nahihina, umiinit yung ulo, and even blood pressure fluctuations. So blood pressure fluctuations are most commonly related to electrolyte imbalance. Sustained elevated blood pressure can be due to inflammation but fluctuations taas baba taas baba most likely is related to electrolyte imbalance so okay i think that's it yung mga questions mostly ano siya relate na answer na natin in our master class group you can lahat ng master class na 21 day you, you are all members of our 14 day master class so for one year so mga nasa 50 siguro mga 50 videos na siguro yung live q and a natin mm, i think so or at least 40 mm, kasi one year na eh, 54 weeks in a year diba <laughs> so yan mga around 40 to 50 videos na I think halos lahat ng questions were already answered there. So you can just review it, put it as background noise in yung bahay. Baka dun na tagot na rin. We, we are still uh, compiling our glossary of most questions para mas mas madali. Frequently asked. Mm, mas mga frequently asked, mga facts natin. Frequently asked questions for you to easily look kung saan doon yung mga questions ninyo. So, thank you so much. Spondylitis, anything ending with itis, I-T-I-S, it is really related to inflammation. So, yes, that can well be managed with low-carb nutrition. Iba so, yun na. Tanong na, na. na? Regarding masterclass, kung sa mga enroll yung mga... Oh, so, our masterclass, you can just... <coughs> send a message to our admins dito sa Diet Doctora or Dr. Josephine Grace Rojo and email. So, nandiyan lang for those na gusto mong mag-text lang. Yan yung numbers natin. 917-993-1239 or chat at 939-919-3719. Other questions related to our events, National Low Carb Day on October 2, 2022. Please no, no, invite your family and friends para mas marami, mas masaya tayo, magkikita kita tayo dyan. Our pre-reg, early bird pre-reg na only 500 pesos is only until next, next week. After that one, it will be on regular rate na. And also, this coming Thursday, Cebu Meet and Greet with collab with Health and Life Summit laboratory diagnostic center in Karkar Cebu. We will send you the location later today for our final venue. I will see you then. And para naman sa gustong magkaroon ng meet and greet na hindi makakasama to our Cebu because the criteria here is quite difficult. We, we are opening up our meet and greet up close and personal dinner with yours truly on the National Low Carb Day. So dinner because our National Low Carb Day will end by 5 to 6 in the afternoon. In Phil Invest 10, Alabang. So while waiting for that special day, always stick to our safe list of our food list where you can print that one sa website na ito for free. Dapat lahat ng bagay and lahat ng bahay ay merong lista ng kalinang pagkain to remind them and to easily stick to this way of life for our health na Napangangailangan. Okay, so this is our LCF Masterclass Ay, live Q&A today, September 4, 2022. See you next time, everyone. Maraming salamat. Bye, love. Bye-bye. <coughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>